community in our churches worldwide and enjoy our whatever and then we create our own God a God who doesn't annoy everyone anyone a God who is agreeable to everybody and that God is very easy to get along with because we tell him what to do <laughs> He follows us. We don't follow him. That God is very good. <laughs> there was a Protestant church. They had a huge poster. Okay? You come, tell us what you want, and we'll give it to you. <laughs> but what is the trick there? As long as you... Yeah. <laughs> we'll give you whatever. You tell us the kind of beliefs. It's like that. Give us, tell us what you want to believe. Okay? We'll give it to you. Okay? That's why we are here, okay? So, and as long as you help us to survive. So what kind of a church that is? Money church. Right. <laughs> the money church, okay? Yeah. Okay, so we have to take these things very, very seriously. Okay? That if it's church teaching, if it's the truth that will set us free from our sinfulness, it is the remedy, it is the medicine, okay? The medication we need. Okay? Thank you, Father. But the medication is not easy okay so none of us really enjoys taking a lot of medication some people do <laughs> like if you are addicted but normally you know you don't want to take a lot of pills but if you are suffering from something you you, you take it not because you love it but it is the medication okay but with truth we have to really love it because it is going to free us to be truly People who are loving and living mean a meaningful existence. Father, what do you think? What was what was the answer for? What was the catechism error, and what was what was uh, the catechism supposed to do to get the truth? When when, uh, when well, probably the catechist will continue to read from this. It, the priest is not there in the class. But they told him not to do it. But the priest is not there in the class. Oh. So probably the catechist will have enough common sense to so I'll continue to read from this until I get fired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a very sad thing. It is extremely sad. But in some circles, that's what is happening. Okay? But thank God, it is not very common. It's not all that common like it's everywhere. But it happens. Okay, so the creator... Mm -hmm. As we said in the beginning, no one can understand where we are, who we are, until we refer to the Creator, okay? the one who made us. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Holy Scripture begins with these solemn words. That's how we begin. That's why the book is called Genesis. In the beginning. The beginning of what? What do we call time? What do we call the heavens and the earth? We can call it cosmos, we can call them galaxies, whatever we want. But that's the beginning. Hmm? The profession of faith takes them up when it confesses that God the Father Almighty is creator of heaven and earth. Today the translation says maker. We know what we mean, but the word creator is better. Okay? Because not every maker is creator. Hmm? So creator of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen. Okay, because we know through faith that creation is not only visible creation or material creation. Okay? Probably invisible creation is vast, okay? larger than visible, we don't know. But when you talk about you know, legions of angels, how many are they? Myriads of angels. Okay? So we don't know. So probably they are more numerous than us. So both visible and invisible creation. So we have to be aware of that because whenever we hear about our bad science, there's good science and bad science. Okay? So bad science, when they talk about reality, reality is only material reality. If it's not material, if it's not empirical, it's not real. But we know better. So we shall speak first of the creator, then of creation, and finally of the fall into sin from which Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God came to raise us up again. So in order to understand redemption, we have to understand what happened before and after. Because what am I being redeemed from if I don't know what happened? In the beginning, we had the state of? In the beginning, we had the state of? Original, original justice. No. Justice. no. Original justice. Okay? The state of original justice. In that state of original justice, God saw whatever he has created and says it is very good. Okay? Things were the way they were supposed to be the way God meant them to be. That state is called, in Hebrew, Shalom. The way things should be. Okay? So right now, there is no Shalom. Because things are not the way they are supposed to be. But we are moving toward Shalom. The way things they are supposed to be. That's what we call heaven. Okay? So, Creation is the foundation, okay? So creation is the foundation of all God's saving plans. That is very fundamental. Creation is the foundation of all God's saving plans. The beginning of the history of salvation that culminates in Christ. Why is creation the foundation of God's saving plans? Because it is creation that fell from grace. That went wrong. Why? Because God, why did God create? What is the purpose of creation? Remember the Hebrew Shabbat, the Sabbath. Okay? We call it the Sabbath, the Shabbat. What was the purpose of the Shabbat? The Sabbath? Let's go, you will say rest again. Okay? okay? But it's not like a kind of resting, not doing anything. It's a rest whereby basically we cease from the routine and celebrate covenant relationship. So creation is space for covenant relationship. That's what God meant creation to be. So in the very beginning, he entered into a covenant relationship with Adam and Eve and creation. That's what, why we have space called creation, covenant relationship. So that covenant was violated by human disobedience. And then God begins the process of recreating okay, everything so that there will be again space for covenant relationship. But now that space will be the new heavens and the new earth, which will take the form of immortality. That's the recreation we receive in Christ Jesus. Okay? So that's why creation is very important. And that's why recently Pope Francis wrote an encyclical about the importance of creation. creation, which people labeled encyclical on the environment to kind of discredit what he was saying. And many Catholics okay, who listened to some of these far right radios okay, believed it that the Pope is a liberal. He's talking about the environment. As I said before, how many of us here have read the encyclical? Two. But how many of us have argued about it? We <laughs> all talked about it. Okay. You see? So it is a very, very important thing. This is exactly what he's talking about. That yes, God gave us this creation. Now that we are being recreated, we should not exploit and abuse creation. Why? Because Romans 8, all creation is groaning for the redemption all creation. And so, it is being redeemed. We have the new heavens and the new earth. The form it will take, we don't know. But by, through faith, we know that it will take place. As the letter of John tells us, what will be, we don't know, but we know that when everything is accomplished, we will be like him. But how he is fully, we can't fully comprehend it now. Okay, but that is the, the process. So, so creation is, is the foundation of all God's saving plans. Because creation is important, because it's the space for covenant relationship. So creation is a covenant. 
when God created Adam and Eve, gave them to subdue, okay, to obey the tree of knowledge of evil. Don't do this, do this, whatever. Human freedom is limited, okay, to maintain what it's supposed to be and to maintain covenant relationship. So creation is covenant with God. Okay? So covenant broken, covenant is recreated. Okay, so it culminates in the coming of Christ. Conversely, the mystery of Christ casts conclusive light, conclusive light, on the mystery of creation and reveals the end. Okay, so conclusive light on the mystery of creation. So if you want to understand the mystery of creation, the beauty, the wisdom, the goodness of creation, where do we go? Christ Jesus. Because he's the light. The conclusive light okay, cast on creation in order to understand its goodness. Okay? So, conclusive light on the mystery of creation and reveals the end for which in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. From the beginning, God envisaged the glory of the new creation in Christ Jesus. In other words, creation begins and it has an end. But what is the goal of creation? As we're going to see, why are we here? Where did we come from? Where are we going? What are the means? Okay, okay so let's take a break. Okay.